I had never seen the crow before in my entire life. My grandmother owned a framing shop up until about seven or eight years ago, maybe a little bit longer back than that. But she had a framing shop for 20, 30 years. In the late 90s, I can remember a big poster coming into the framing shop one day. It had this man with long hair and a white painted face. By the way, Sting, the wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God. You don't he, know that? You don't know this? He totally <laughs> stole his entire gimmick from this yeah. character. Yeah. I mean, not just a little Point. bit of inspiration. Yeah, Sorry. not just a little bit of inspiration like he likes to say, but yeah. he literally stole everything about his character from this movie. He actually had a crow one time in the rafters with him. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Like absolutely anymore. nuts. Like I said, I didn't see this movie growing up, but watching it now for the first time, now that I'm 35 and it's 2024, I fully expected to think this movie sucked. I was wrong. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> to be a film that came out, oh my gosh, 30 years ago, it really, really holds up. So The Crow is one of my favorite movies of all time. I remember I was like in the sixth grade. My buddy's like, oh, I just saw this movie, The Crow. I'm, I want to be in for Halloween. I'm like, The Crow? What's The Crow? And my dad uh, and I, he, my dad would always let us watch like action movies. I was already seeing the fight and all that, that I probably was. Well, yeah, even long before that. So when The Crow came out, I was like, well, this is all like, this is comic booky and like all dark and stuff. And I just, I had never seen anything like that at the time. As far as action movies go, it was just so uh, well done and stylized. And I did recognize some of the actors from other movies at the time when I was younger too, for sure. That stood out to me. I remember like David Patrick Kelly, he was in The Warriors, Commando. Yeah. That was oh, T-Bird. Yeah. You got Tony Todd playing Grange. Michael Wincott is top dollar. Michael Wincott was one of the scariest villains ever back in the day in movies. So it was just a great cast, uh, done well, despite the tragedy behind the filming of it. Yeah, this kind of brings me back to uh, what happened recently with Alec Baldwin. He was given a gun on the set of a film. The armorer said that it was good to go, and he fired and he killed someone, right? Isn't that similar to what happened here on this film with Brandon Lee? I feel like there was a little more, there was a little more backstory because there was rumors that that was payback for his father. In that scene, there's everybody shooting. How does one random bullet come in? And everybody's just like, and that one bullet happened to hit him. Mm. I seen the movie when it came out. Like I said, I was older than you guys. I loved it. I was a big Bruce Lee fan. So I was like, oh, his son is acting awesome in my opinion like because i don't really like romance movies it is a great love story like you yeah. literally put yourself into that like what would you do if someone came in and murdered your wife to be or your current wife and stuff like that like you would just go nuts and, and go after these people and it was so great i mean the one-liners in it the violence the action one of my favorite movies and like i said before the soundtrack that goes with it yeah. was done like at a level like James Gunn does with Guardians of the Galaxy. It really enhanced every scene, all the songs that he had. It's a rock and roll love story, pretty much. Yeah, it's so 90s. It's it, super it, 90s. <laughs> honestly, it brings me back when I watch it. Like, I was just like, wow, you know, this is like it triggered a lot of memories, I guess, in my brain, you know, just hearing the music, seeing the setting and the actors. You mentioned the villain with the long hair. He was also in Robin Hood, Prince of yep. Thieves with Kevin mm -hmm. Costner. Yep, that's Sheriff of Nottingham or whatever. Or no, one yeah. of the henchmen, henchmen. Great villain. He was definitely one of the biggest villains of the 90s. That group, he was definitely in there. The yeah. visuals for this movie were super sweet for the year. You know, the, how it comes in and starts panning over, you know, in the opening scene and stuff like that. Soundtrack was great. I really liked it. It's probably been, I don't know. 20 years since I watched it the first time. Just going back and finding it and being able to watch it again, it kind of brought me back to my childhood, you know, watching it the first time. And it was, it was it was a really good film, and it's aged well. It definitely aged better than Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. I'll say that. Because <laughs> you have scenes in that movie where Green Goblin's like, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> him with the green gas. Yeah, it's great. As a kid, it was great. Spider-Man 2, however... Is a whole different story. Alex Proyas directed The Crow. And I don't know, has anybody here, uh, some of you probably have, uh, Dark City. That's another good one that uh, he did. Dark City is a really crazy. And this has a very similar, like, visuals and stuff. I don't want to give away too much. It's a really cool uh, movie with uh, lots of surprises uh, to check out. And I believe he also did, which is completely different. And years later, uh, he did I, Robot with Will Smith. 
The guy that did okay. yeah, Alice Boys. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure he directed that as well. Which is also a good movie. Like completely different, but the director, speaking of the director, Darren, of the original Crow, he came out and blasted good. the the new Crow reboot. He was like, What is this garbage? This is a piss stain on the memory of Eric Draven and Brandon Lee. I think that that approach might have been a little radical and extreme. Yeah. The new film definitely looks different. I think that they're trying not to be too much like the original from 1994, but it's kind of a double-edged sword because you're going to get the comparisons. Right. The trailer looked good, I thought. Right. I thought the trailer looks pretty too. cool, but the look I'm not a fan of. What did you guys think about it? feels like Jared Leto's version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just tired of movies just like, hey, we're going to remake The Crow, call it The Crow, but make it a completely different movie for the most part. Most remakes drive me nuts, especially the new, you got to be cautious. I just feel like a lot of it's just, okay, we're going to put the name on it. There's half the ticket sales right there just because we put, oh, and then the reviews come in and everybody's like, this is terrible. Well, you knew it was going to be terrible. You paid to go see the name. In the comics, though, weren't there multiple crows? Or am I wrong about oh, that? Yeah, yeah, I believe so, yeah. We, we don't know if this is Eric Draven or maybe this is, but I think yeah. it is Draven. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> There's other uh, crow yeah. movies, though, obviously, with different crows yeah, and, and stuff. I mean, I'm sure that it's probably falls into that somewhat like follows the way that canon set up in the comics. I did like the song they used in the trailer, the uh, Post Malone and Ozzy song. I thought that's yeah. that's a great song. It is a great song. Time will tell. I don't think they still have an official release date for the film yet, but we should be getting it this year. It looks like they're going to focus a little more on the love story and the beginning of them before they kind of delve into the, the other stuff later in the film. Just like any movie, you can't really tell much from a trailer. It might be terrible and it might be great. There's just no telling. I will say that Bill Skarsgård, same guy that played Pennywise, is a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant actor. Him, his brother, and his father. All yeah, brilliant actors. his father was in Star Wars and Thor and some other stuff, too, that I'm not thinking of. Oh, he was also in Dune. He was the big, fat villain that floats. You know, you guys yeah. seen Dune? Yeah, he was great. Of course, I've seen Dune. Come on. Here's a question. As a, obviously, merchandising collector, how much Crow stuff do you think you're going to see from this film? Was there a lot I, of memorabilia I, from the first first film? I, yeah, I want to say as a kid, I had a crow action figure. Yeah, I know McFarlane did, did one. NECA just did one not too long ago. I think Mezco did one, I'm pretty sure. I don't foresee them, and I might be wrong, because they definitely are going to do anything they can to get money. I don't. I see them bringing out crow merchandise from the higher end, like you know McFarlane, things like that. But I don't know if I see them doing like the, a kid's version that we'll see at like Walmart or anything no, like that in the crow. Man. When the first one came out, you saw stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. It's interesting that there's probably more adult collectors now than there are kids that buy action figures. Probably because not. this generation. Yeah, they, they don't. They, they, yeah. This is all they do, you know? Right. Yeah. Not to sound like the old guy here, but it's true. You know, it's it's, it's true. Yeah, our parents had, you know, crazy, wacky stuff back in their day that we didn't really play with when we were growing up. Started to get introduced to video games and action figures. Well, my parents had action figures too, though, but they weren't quite the same. I think that action figures were definitely the most popular in the 80s and 90s. My four-year-old son's been getting into them. Well, I mean, it helps that his dad's got a room full of them, too. He's been getting into He likes the uh, ones you see at like Walmart, uh, Marvel Avengers and Spider and Miles yeah. Morales. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's rocking around. He's getting, you know, he's learning the way. Ra yeah. Raise them right. Throw, yeah. throw the action figures at him instead of t uh, tablets and stuff. Makes them use their brain and creativity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I used to have more wrestling action figures than any any yeah. action figures when I was a kid. This is full of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it, it wasn't the rubber action figures that you can kind of bend their arms like that a little bit, but it was the uh, probably late 90s, mid to late 90s, like WCW and WWE right. action figures. Toy biz. And I also had a magnetic H Hogan and Goldberg that their fist had magnets on the end of them. <laughs> Yep. And they could connect and Goldberg could pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that Brandon Lee's performance here is amazing. Similar to the Joker, even how it's so nuanced and layered. There can be scenes where you see him make a joke, be very threatening and be very sentimental all at the same time. The pawn shop scene comes to mind where he busts in there and his main purpose is to get his wedding ring, right? You know, his original wedding ring. When he goes in there, he makes a few jokes but it never crosses that line of just being silly or goofy. He really does a good job here. Is that gasoline I smell? 
there's a shot at the end, and it's from what you see the crow walking into the group of the gangsters all sitting at the table, and that's almost the same exact shot of the Joe Keith Ledger's Joker walking into the table full of gangsters in The Dark mm-hmm. Knight. Two crazy guys that are pretty much, one th- knows he's invincible and the other thinks he's invincible. It's really sad that we lost Brandon Lee because from what you can see in this film, and I think also, what's it called? The Way of the Dragon? Where he played his dad? Did you guys ever see that? He didn't play his dad in The Way of the Dragon. It was his nephew, Jason Lee, I believe. Or No, they're not even related. It was Jason Lee that played him, not Brandon Lee. Well, irregardless, seeing him in this film, it's really sad that, I mean, either way, it would have been sad that he passed away, but it looked yeah. like he had a bright future as an actor. Because like I said, he really brought a great performance here. A wrestler based his whole entire gimmick off of that for <laughs> decades. They talked about how this was going to be his breakout role. I mean, he was in some other movies and stuff. A lot of like he was getting kind of typecast in the beginning just because he was Bruce Lee's son doing a lot of the action stuff. But then two movies right before this where he had a couple more. He was in a movie with Dolph Lundgren. I forget the name of it right now, though. Yeah, I can't think of it. I know what movie you're talking about. I don't yeah, remember yeah. the name of it. It was good. Uh, too. Yeah, it was good. It's another movie. Oh. It's an action movie called Rapid Fire, I believe. That was pretty good, too. I remember that being one of the dad comes home on the weekend with two action movies from the VH store or VHS. <laughs> story those were the days right i mean going to the video store with your yeah. parents on the weekend yeah. getting a couple movies and going back yeah. i mean we were satisfied with so little and now <laughs> it's not enough to have one streaming service you have to have right. seven right yeah. you literally have thousands and thousands if not hundreds of thousands of movies at your fingertips and you don't know what to watch <laughs> there's like only one or maybe two maybe three shows on each of the seven streaming services that i actually watch too <laughs> but you have to have them all to get those shows that you want that's how they get you okay guys moment of truth i'll start off this is probably going to be the controversial opinion here when i rank this film on a scale of zero to ten the reason that i have it where it is which is a five is because other films, I cannot find it in my heart to rank the crow above them like Batman 89, which is also a five, but I couldn't put it above that film. It's also the last five before we get to the 5.5s. I, in my mind, I don't think a five is a negative number. When I start thinking, okay, four Mm -hmm. below, that's more of a negative number. Me putting this film at a five, I, problem at all with that what do you guys think <laughs> i think your rating system's messed up that's what I, think. <laughs> I feel like a five isn't bad but it's not good either me personally i would rate the film at least a seven and i think back then when i first watched it, it was probably like a 10 to me but looking back at it now and you know comparing it to what i've watched now that's where i'm at it's still a really good movie. Soundtrack was awesome on it. The visuals for early 90s was was great. Really good storyline. That's where I'm at. This might be controversial, uh, but no, no, no. I'm going to give it a nine uh, for sure, just because a lot of that's just because it's one of my favorites of all time. The directional style is done well, everything, um, the acting, most of the acting for the most part, especially Brandon Lee. Ernie Hudson, we didn't mention him. He's phenomenal in this. He yeah. helps keep this thing grounded, too, the whole time. He's there to keep it grounded. Yeah, I'm going to give it a nine for both uh, just the quality and the nostalgia factor and the fact that I, one of those are just films you grew up with that we all have them that you love. I think that that's part of the reason why I can't rank it higher than I have it. If I would have grew up with this film, I probably would have had a, a much larger connection to it. Sure. And probably ranked it a little higher. What do you think, Rick? I get that. Yeah, I'm going nine or ten for me. I, like I said, I grew up with it. I think I've seen it like two, three times in the theater when it came out. I love that movie. The The storyline's great. The action is great. The music, the one-liners, the plethora of great actors. I mean, Iggy Pop was supposed to be in it. He was going to play Fun Boy at one point. Oh, wow. Yeah. Big Bruce Lee fan from my martial arts background and everything. So it was like Brandon Lee it was like, yes, here we go. You know, this is going to be his breakout movie. I had all the hype behind this movie, and I really loved it. And watching it again really just brought me back to it. So yeah, it's up there for me. I rewatched it today. It was so fun. I, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did rewatching it again. There's plenty of times throughout my daily life that I say, say things like "Try harder, try again." The one-liners in it from it is just freaking great. Are you gonna do that walking away thing? No, I think I'll just rather use your door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was so a good. good. Sword fight on top of the church when it's raining yeah. and Brandon pulls That was out pretty the- badass. Yeah. So, okay, for me, that was there, there was some left to be desired there with that action sequence. That's kind of one one of my big hangups. 
on the crow. I like a, a skank when he's like, I feel like a little itty bitty worm on a hook. <laughs> <laughs> the bad guys were really good. Yeah, they were uh, so fire it up. Yeah. Yeah, fire, fire it up. Yeah. It what was the name of the actor again, Darren, that was in the Warriors? Uh, David Patrick Kelly. He's great. Yeah, he's in a lot of he was he was one of those guys that was a villain like Michael Wincott was in a lot of stuff back then too. Uh same thing, I don't remember his name, but the guy that played 1010. They picked some really good carry, uh, character right. actors. Fun boy, um, played by Michael Massey, he was the guy that actually fired the gun with the round. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I read that somewhere, and then like he suffered from I might like he suffered from some depression and things like that after that, like big time. Yeah. Just felt responsible. Wow. Yeah. I did not watch the second one, the Salvation, yeah. I think it is. Edward uh, Edward Furlong, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terminator Two kid. He's the crow in the sequel. <laughs> is it good? No. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> they got Bai Ling back, or at least her character. It's like 20 years later or something, and she's blind. I don't know. It's just it's Edward Furlong's the crow. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Comic Book Cinema. And until next time, have a good one. <laughs>